Hello everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm having a great day because I am playing with some Olimex stuff. If you're not familiar with Olimex, you know, they are not the biggest name in the world, but they make some of the absolute coolest projects for makers. And so uh, everything they make is open source and it's reasonably priced and it is just different from all the rest of the stuff that you're gonna find. You've got things like this STM32 board, which is made for, um, working with the CAN bus. You've got this one here. This is the uh, Olimex, this is the Z80 board. So they've got a, uh, a full Z80 processor. Yeah, that Z80 from the old computers like the Tandys and stuff like that. And uh, this gives you a full simulation of stuff like the BBC Micro and you've got a little SD card slot and USB interface and uh, you know all kinds of interfaces back here for adding things like joysticks and just a very cool single board computer that allows you to emulate all sorts of retro things. We've got the ESP32 Fab GL, which allows you to have VGA from your ESP32. You get a speaker and an SD card, as well as keyboard and mouse interfaces, all kinds of fun stuff like that. You've got the Neo 6502, which uh, has the same processor as like an Apple II, so you can use something like this to emulate an Apple II, and it also has a Pico on there for some GPIO stuff and some RAM, uh, but just very, very cool boards, HDMI, stuff like that. Uh, but we're not really here to talk about those things. We're here to talk about the more traditional ESP32 boards. What originally turned me on to Olimex was this board right here. This is the ESP32 EVB, and it has something that most ESP32 boards do not have. It has Ethernet, and I uh, absolutely love that. Wi-Fi is great, but when you really care about connectivity, Ethernet is what you want. And they took that, and they added all kinds of other stuff. You got some buttons. You've got an SD card slot. You have um, IR in and out and you've got their expansion slot, you've got some relays over here and connections for the relays and all that stuff is just really awesome. And I thought for sure that this was gonna be one of the foundations of my business for the different things that I do, but it turned out that one of the features that this board was missing was power over ethernet. As much as I like being able to power it with USB or a barrel jack or even some kind of weird POE adapter, um, you know, I really needed isolation and native poe and that's where this board comes in this is the uh esp32 poe iso and this board has been the one that the vast majority of my um, commercial projects are based on and i just love these boards they're cheap they still have the sd card slot uh, but there's not a whole lot built in in terms of other stuff you've got your ethernet you've got your isolation and you've got this interface here but for the most part i mean there's not even mounting holes on this thing so it is a very very bare board and it's why that i've designed several boards to expand it out and uh, I was browsing PCB Way one day and I came across this. And I think that in my mind, this little board here will make this board what this board could have been. So let's go ahead and queue up a montage and we'll take a look. All right, let me give you a tour of what we have here. Um, we've got some resistors up here for the three LEDs. You've got L2, L4, L5. Those are the pins on the SP32 you're using. We've got some jumpers up here that you can disable these LEDs. We'll talk more about that later. You have a breakout of the UEXT connectors. You notice that these different, uh, well, not that one, these different Olimex boards have this UEXT connector, which is sort of their way of standardizing a bunch of their accessories. So you have a breakout for that. You've got these female headers here, which is how I'm actually mounting the ESP32. Um, you've got a couple of resistors and a couple of diodes over here, some transistors right here for the relays, jumpers to enable and disable the relays. And then one of my favorite features is that you have every single pin 
of the ESP32 broken out and labeled. And as you can see, boards like this, because they're using a whole bunch of pins for other things, the pins aren't always in an obvious order. So it's really nice on here to be able to look in nice bold lettering and see what each of these pins is doing. You've got 39, 36, 35, so you wouldn't ever remember that off the top of your head. But then on the other side, we have a breakout so that you can um, access the pins here. As well as for every single pin, you get your voltage and ground. And then a bonus set of terminals on the outside if you're doing any kind of prototyping. And to be honest, that's probably the only thing I would change about this board if I was designing it myself. Is that it uses these... Um, 2.54 millimeter headers, which is nice because if you don't have these kinds of things, you can actually just use the same pins that you use for everything else. But um, they're just a little small for my preference. I would rather have the five millimeter headers. I think you've got space for it. But again, I didn't build it, so I can't complain. I'm just grateful to have it. Now, I mentioned the ability to turn things on and off, and one of the reasons why that is so awesome is that thanks to the sponsor of this video, PCBWay, you can get 10 or sometimes 11 or 12 of these boards for five bucks. And so what makes that so awesome is that you can buy a bunch of these and you can configure them different ways. So let's say your first one that you're gonna be doing some prototyping on, you're gonna build all the way out. I'm gonna stick every last part on there and I'm just gonna build the entire board out. But then you decide, well, my project only really needs one relay so then the second board you build out you just put the one relay add the couple of components you need over there and that's it and that's one of the great things about pcb way you get so many boards for so cheap that you can just build them up however you want you can have one that's fully built one that's partially built one for experimenting you can bodge one you can do whatever you want you can give them to your friends you can go sell them on ebay because pcb way gives you these things in an affordable manner and so i want to thank pcb way for for sponsoring this channel. I want to thank them for uh, for the boards because they're awesome. And I'm going to show you in the description where you can get this board and you can get 10 of them for five bucks plus a little bit of shipping. All right, so let's take this thing and hook it up and I will show you how it works. Um, being a software guy, I obviously wrote you all a uh, an example sketch that I will share with you in the description but what it does is allows you to control these relays and LEDs from a web interface. So we're gonna hook it up, make sure that the LAN is on the side that says LAN, and I'm gonna plug it in with PoE. You don't have to use PoE, you can just use regular ethernet and then um, you know, plug into the USB there. So there you have it. I hope you find this useful. The um, Ethernet is a little bit different because obviously a lot of people don't do Ethernet on ESP32. So hopefully that example sketch helps. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching.